In this video I'm going to be making a ladder style shelving unit. This is another project for my brother. He found this shelving unit online that he wanted to buy but it was out of stock so he asked me if I could make one for him. First I did a quick drawing and sketch up using dimensions that my brother gave me so that it would be the perfect size for the place that he had in mind. Full plans and a cut list for this build will be available via my Etsy pages and my Patreon page if you're interested in having a go at making this. For this build I bought some 34mm square 2.4m lengths of pine from my local DIY shop. I spent some time picking out the straightest ones I could find just by sighting down the length of each piece because a lot of them were bent like a banana as you can see here. And for the shelves I had a nice piece of walnut veneered plywood. This stuff is really hard to come by in the UK. I managed to pick up this piece second hand locally via Facebook marketplace. First I checked for square and it looked good so I started making the cuts to cut all of the shelves to size based on the dimensions from my drawing. I didn't have quite enough plywood here for all of the grain to be running in the same direction on each shelf so for one of the shelves and I chose the middle shelf the grain will be running from left to right instead of front to back. Next I wanted to make some edge banding to cover the plywood edges and I didn't have any walnut but I did have some pieces of sapili which is a similar colour. The plywood measured about 14mm thick so first I ripped the sapili to that width at the table saw. I wanted the edge banding to be about 2mm thick and because ripping pieces that thin between the blade and the fence of the table saw isn't very safe I set up a sacrificial fence on the other side of the blade using a piece of wood and some hot glue. That allowed me to cut multiple pieces all at a consistent thickness by moving the fence in between each cut. and it's easy enough to remove that block with a mallet. It comes off nice and clean. Next I could apply wood glue and stick the edge banding along each side of each shelf. I used masking tape to hold it in place until the glue dried. The stuff I use is quite tacky so it's great for glue ups like this and if you pull it tight it holds really well. I'll leave a link to this tape in the description box if you're interested in buying some. I snapped off any excess and left the glue to dry for a couple of hours. When I came back I removed all of the tape and I could then flush cut the banding using my Japanese pull saw followed by a little sanding. And then I could edge band the front edge of each shelf in exactly the same way. I didn't bother doing the back edges of each shelf because that just wasn't necessary. They won't be seen when it's up against the wall. So the first thing that I want to do with my pine uprights is pick the straightest lengths and as you can see this one here is pretty good and I also want to pick the cleanest faces so this face here hasn't really got any knots on it apart from this tiny one here which I'm not too worried about so I'm going to choose this as the front face. Next I want to cut a 10 degree angle to both the top and the bottom but the problem is I don't have quite enough length at my mitre station so instead I'm going to use my bevel gauge and to set this to 10 degrees off 90 I'm going to use my digital angle gauge. First I'll zero this. Now I can lock my bevel gauge to that angle. I marked up the 10 degree angles and also some guidelines to help me make the cuts straight. And then I made the cuts to one end of each length with my hand saw. Then I clamped those ends together with the angles flush so that I could measure and mark up the opposite ends and I cut those both at the same time. Then I could mark up the centre of each shelf position based on the dimensions from my drawing. I also marked up the 10 degree angles for the shelves just to stop me getting confused when I cut the joints for the shelves to sit in. To cut those joints for the shelves I decided to make a jig using a piece of plywood. I marked up a 10 degree angle onto it, cut that at the mitre saw. Then using an off cut of the walnut ply offered up to the centre mark I could position the plywood pieces on either side and flush with the back edge of the upright. I clamped the pieces in place and then using a template bit in my router which has a bearing at the top to run along the plywood edges I could cut a perfect fitting joint for the shelf to slot into.
So I did the same again for each shelf position. Then I spent some time sanding all of the shelves and the uprights too. I sanded at 120 grit. I used a block plane just to soften the edges of the edge banding and I followed that up with some hand sanding to refine the edges and get everything flush. Next I used my router to round over all the edges of the pine because this is softwood so it splinters, splits and chips quite easily. And these roundovers will make the edges a little less prone to damage and it also softens the look of them. Another problem with pine is that the knots in the wood contain a lot of resin and when the wood gets painted that resin can bleed through the paint over time ruining the paint job. So to prevent that from happening I used some shellac to seal the knots. I painted on two coats directly over the knots getting as much in there as possible. Then I came back and sanded them smooth and then rather than just applying the shellac to the knots for the final coat I decided to paint the entire uprights because I wasn't sure if the paint would look different on the shellac areas so it seemed like the safest option. Most people use a shellac based primer to stop knots bleeding through the paint and I'll link to a few of those products below in case you're interested but I already had some shellac so that's what I used. Before adding paint I first masked off the shelf slots because I don't want to get paint in there as I want the glue to adhere to the wood properly later on. Then I applied the first coat of paint. I left that to dry overnight and because the paint raised the grain of the wood slightly I denibbed with 400 grit wet and dry paper. And then I applied a second coat. For the final coat of paint I used this matte black stuff I got from Amazon and I really liked the finish this left. I'll leave a link to it in the description box below if you're interested. I could then remove the tape from the slots. I added my maker's mark to the bottom shelf while I had easy access to it. Next it was time for the glue up and I must confess I was pretty anxious about gluing this one up because I couldn't think of an easy way to do it. Just because the 10 degree angle seemed like it would make things a little bit awkward and I wasn't wrong. I started by measuring and marking up from the front edge of each shelf where it would meet the uprights based on the dimensions from the drawing because each shelf would protrude from the upright by the same distance at the front. I added glue to one of the uprights and then I could offer up the marks I'd made to get the positioning of each shelf correct. It was also important to check that the shelf was sitting square to the uprights so I used my speed square to check. Doing the assembly on the sawhorses really wasn't working so I moved it all down onto the ground. That worked better for pushing the shelves in place. Then I could add the second upright and it was a little tricky to get all of the joints lined up at once and I had to work quickly because I didn't want the glue to set before I had everything positioned correctly. I then moved it back onto the sawhorses and clamped the shelves in place. Then I offered up a straight edge to see if the back of each of the shelves were level with one another. They didn't need to be perfect because most walls aren't perfectly straight anyway but I still wasn't quite happy with how a couple of the shelves were positioned so I removed a couple of clamps and hit them with a mallet until they were better aligned to the others before tightening the clamps again. And that looked much better but one of the shelves was still a little bit out. But I had another idea for how to address that because I didn't want to disturb this glue up any more than I already had. I cleaned up the glue squeeze out with a damp cloth. And then to address that issue with the next shelf that wasn't positioned quite right I made a mark for how much I wanted to remove on both sides. And then I made a pencil mark down the length of the shelf and there was about 5mm here I wanted to remove. I used my cordless planer for this, taking multiple passes working from each side inwards to avoid tear out at the end. Sighting down the length of the unit I was then pretty happy with how the shelves were aligned to one another. It wasn't perfect but it was good enough. 
So I've just realised I've made a mistake. When I fitted the second upright, I must have got it the wrong way round because here I've got 32 centimetres and here I've got 36 centimetres. So that means now I need to cut off the bottom of this upright and the top of that upright. And it also means that the unit is going to be a little bit shorter than originally planned. I cut off the excess with a handsaw and then refinished the bottoms. So originally I was going to add a bottom rung to the ladder on the inside of the uprights like that. But because I've just lost a bit of height, I think I'm going to add it to the ends instead. I marked up for length and cut them at the mitre saw. There were a couple of advantages to fitting the top and bottom rails in this way, so it ended up being a bit of a happy accident. I could attach them with screws and there would be no need to plug the screw holes, which is what I had intended to do originally, because these won't be visible at the top or bottom. And secondly, I wouldn't need to rip a 10 degree angle along the length of the bottom and top rails at the table saw, which is again what I had planned to do because the 10 degree angles are already established onto the uprights. So in hindsight, I actually think this works better than what I had originally drawn up. I used the router to add a round over to these pieces too and finished them in the same way with shellac followed by a few coats of paint. And then because the glue and clamps had caused a bit of damage to the paintwork, I came back to do a bit of sanding and touch ups to the paint. The final job was to finish the shelves and originally I was thinking of trying an oil finish mixed with some white spirit to pop the grain of the wood, but after testing that out alongside a couple of coats of acrylic spray varnish on some scraps of the walnut ply, I preferred the latter. It had less of a red colour tone to it, which I thought looked much nicer. So that's what I used. I gave it two coats in total, denibbing in between with 400 grit paper to keep them nice and smooth. I'm really pleased with how this project turned out. The walnut plywood is a thing of beauty. I just wish it was available to buy around here. My local timber merchant can actually get walnut veneered MDF, which is the next best thing. And I'm actually going to be using that on a future commission. So stay tuned for that. This project took about 11 hours to make in total. And here are a few photos of it in place in my brother's living room. I am going to be recommending to my brother that he secures the shelving unit to the wall just by putting a couple of screws through the top rail into the wall with some wall plugs in. I think that'll make it plenty stable enough. It is pretty stable just leaning it against the wall though. I think because all of the angles are correct it just kind of sits there nicely and I don't think it would go anywhere but better safe than sorry. The biggest challenge on this project was definitely the glue up and I think that's probably why I made the mistake of gluing in one of the uprights upside down. I think it was just a result of my anxiousness to get it assembled. Silly mistake to make but really it turned out okay and as I mentioned adding the rails to the top and the bottom rather than on the inside of the uprights was a happy accident so all's well that ends well. If anyone has any suggestions about how I could have better done the glue up I'd love to hear them in the comments section. As I mentioned at the start, plans and a cut list for this project are available either via my Etsy page for a small cost or via my Patreon page if you want to have a go at making one of these yourself. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos if you haven't already. You can also support the channel on Patreon where you can get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists and a name credit at the end of my videos too. Thank you for watching. Thank you.